Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. In this episode, we'll talk about maps, 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 maps. We'll talk about Google Maps, we'll talk about Bing Maps, and we'll talk about how to use these maps to help you create a flight plan in Little Nav Map to import into Microsoft Flight Simulator for some sightseeing. I tried yesterday streaming on uh, Twitch and I realized that it's really hard to do this unscripted. I'm doing this unscripted now, but I've learned a lot setting up those two uh, POI. So we'll kind of repeat that process with something new. That's why I'm recording this right now. And since I'm recording not streaming, I can do it in 1080p, 60 frames out fully. The screen looks clearer for everyone. Uh, before we dive in, I think first thing we should set up the little nav map. So if you don't have this yet, uh, you can just Google little nav map and it's a great tool. It will record your flight progress, it will record you know, your fuel report, uh, flight performance, plot nice flight plans and give you elevation, you know, airspace, limit, ceiling, um, weather, light, uh, life, wind, and all that. You can figure that out after you download it. But this episode will focus on how to use the, uh, Google Maps and Bing Maps and Little Nav Map to plan flight for sightseeing purposes. So before everything, install the uh, little nav map and after you install you can go into window and go to style and you can set up you know uh, how it looks so it will default to the windows vista so it will be it will look like that but it's kind of too bright for me if you run it on a second monitor you know it's kind of your face is always lit so I chose the night theme and after I do that, I'll also go to Tools and Options. And you see how the text for these are smaller right now. I'll go to uh, Display in Text. And I'll change all these to 150%. So that I get bigger text for recording and streams and whatnot. But for general reading, it's just easier when you're flying. After this, you go to units and you set up whatever units you, you, you like, you know. If you like meters, you know, for altitude or whatever, it's up to you. But uh, one thing we should set up because we're going to sight, sightseeing and we need the GPS coordinates to plot exactly what we're going to see. We would change this from degrees, degree minute. Uh, seconds to decimal degree because that's the kind of, that's what the Bing map and Google map uses So choose decimal degree here Hit Apply or OK and you're ready to go So after that The little enough map is set up for plotting a flight plan for sightseeing using Google map or Bing maps so first thing is done. Second thing we want I want to talk about is uh, the difference between Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome. I noticed when I was using Google Chrome and checking out, you know, a Google Map and then dragging the map around, it's quite laggy, and it shouldn't be because you know it's a modern computer, graphics card, and all that. It shouldn't be. And then I uh, opened Microsoft Edge. You know, not even Bing Maps, like open Google Map and drag that around. So the same, you know, Google Map in, in Edge and in Google Maps in Chrome, drag that around. And I noticed that uh, Microsoft Edge is way smoother. So it was kind of puzzled. I was like, hmm, what's going on? So I went Control Shift Escape. And then I see that the uh, the Edge. Is really accelerated and the Chrome wasn't but you know I enable it so now you see it but 
before I saw the Microsoft Edge is 3D accelerated and Chrome wasn't it was so it looked like that okay so then I was like hmm so I Google you know how they turn on acceleration blah blah and it turns out that you need to enable the um, experimental acceleration from Google Chrome in order to get the same effect as you get in Microsoft Edge assuming you're a Chrome fan so the way to do that is you type in chrome colon slash slash flags and then in the search box you search rend rendering and then three things will pop up and you just gotta enable the override software rendering list this setting will enable the you know accelerated ui in the in the chrome so you make it enable and then it will ask you to relaunch chrome and you just click relaunch and now chrome will be as fast as the edge i think so far i tested so that's the second thing uh the third thing i want to talk about is the difference between uh google map and bing maps right so that's bing maps it's google map I'm just using United States as a example for now. It doesn't matter where, but US is good. So you already noticed in Bing Maps, the color looks quite corrected, you know, and pretty sharp from this altitude. But generally, the green, you know, and the browns and things, it looks like white balance almost but if you look at google maps it's a little more blurry because of the color it's actually not blurry but then if you look at um, arizona for example you see that orange patch there you know how when you see photos photographs from arizona it's always orange those arches and stuff in the national park so Bing Maps isn't like that, but if you zoom into Bing Maps, after a certain level, you will see the orange. See that? See how? Hang on. Wait. Okay. Well, maybe uh, you're not supposed to say orange while you're recording video. Someone might be really sensitive in the States, calling them orange. But anyway. Oh, no. I mean to say Bing Maps is not orange. And then Google Map, it's orange from all the way up. So that's interesting, like a difference. Another interesting thing, for example, um, Bing Maps, like if you want to search locations or just general, like generic names, they, they don't have it. Like it's missing a lot of generic names. For, for example, that arch, right? So that's, uh, there's a hope arch in Arizona and that's the, the hope arch right the, the, the hole like that right so it's called hope arch if you search hope arch on Bing Maps it brings you nothing so you, don't, you won't see where what you know hello but if you search hope arch in Google Maps Oh, actually bring you there it's even like green text it means you know it's actual thing you can block with so that's another difference between the two so sometimes if you try to find landmarks that you want to go site see and you don't find in Bing Maps try Google Maps 
and then you know that's why like in the in this video i'm going to talk about both methods of using google map with little nav map and also using bing maps now it's way easier to use bing maps for little nav map and the reason it's for the uh, gps coordinate so let's talk about google maps first you know pasting things into little nav map so google map for example if you notice there are two gps coordinates up there these are decimal uh, degree coordinates and if i move the map around you'll see that the numbers change 36.2 See, see the last digits change see the digits and the reason for that is because google wants that you know when you share the link on top they want whoever you're sharing it to to see exactly what you're seeing so if you put the whole arch pin on the bottom right for example and you paste this link for your friends they open you know they click on the link they're going to see exactly this picture with the pin at the bottom right assuming you're similar resolution Right, and that's why that number changed, and that's no good for us because we're gonna paste that decimal degree in the little nav map, and if we paste diff you know different numbers in the little map, nav map is gonna show you wrong locations. The whole point of this video is how to plot exact locations, you know, in the little nav map, plan it, and then import that into Microsoft Simulator so you have, so you have the exact dot on the flight simulator flight plan. To find stuff because sometimes it's not easy like when you arrive at this spot in the air you know things will look generally the same like it's not that easy to recognize that part versus that part you know so you want that exact dot there and the way to do it in uh, google maps it's after you search it don't drag the map around okay so just search it enter and don't drag it around, don't move it around. Just right after you search it, this will be the decimal degrees, the north and west, because it's a negative, num a negative means west, positive means east. This will be the exact decimal degree for that pin right there at the bottom of the pin, right? So don't touch the map, don't drag the map. And that will be it. So. What I do now is I will copy that coordinate and I will paste it in Notepad or whatever you use Notepad plus plus. You don't have to, by the way. You can save it in the map, map, but I'm showing you so you can paste it there like that. That's hope. Uh, hope. Arch, if you want to, you could do this, but you really don't have to because if you put all this in the little nav map anyway, it's going to remember. So we do that. And actually, you know what? For the experimental purposes, let's say that we got this from Google Maps. Okay. And now I'll go back to that. Now, there's no way you could get that from Bing Maps because you just can't. Like, you know, like how are you going to do that? When you say this, then what are you gonna do? <laughs> you find every song now, right? And then, like by hand, for example. So, okay. So it's on the right of that giant ridge there. So you know it's down here. So you zoom in, and I see the same giant ridge. And then the whole part would be somewhere here. And if I zoom in more, I recognize that part. So the whole arch would actually be a little loop. And that little shadow. And the right. Alright, you see that? Like it looks totally different, but I recognize it because I see it right there. That's the whole arch. Right? But if you type in bang, it won't help you. Well, I have the coordinates right now, so it will, but if you put in whole arch and press enter, you won't see that. 
if I put in the coordinates, you know, since I have it on the clipboard, and press enter in Bing Maps, I get it. But it's not exactly on the arch itself for some reason. So, you know, I, I, I don't like this. I wonder what happened if I paste that in the little map map later, but let's ignore that for, for now. And we'll talk about the advantage of uh, Bing Maps versus Google Maps. So the disadvantage would be that if Bing Maps don't, you know, have all the generic search terms or whatever in there, the advantage for using Bing Maps for little map maps and then exporting to Microsoft Simulator is that every point you click on Bing Maps, it's going to easily give you that decimal degree, for example. If you want to go exactly here, for no reason, you click on it. Actually, sorry, a right click on it. Do you see that? It immediately gives you the decimal degree and you can copy right away. Like I click it, there, copy. Now it's in your clipboard. In Google Maps, you can't. Not only can't, you, if you drag the map around, it's gonna screw up the number on top. It doesn't give you the decimal degree on the left either. Can't see it. No details, nothing. Share it, still won't give it. Send to phone nearby, save, doesn't do anything. What about save? What if I say? Okay, so I'm not signing in, in Edge. But anyway, Google Map doesn't have that readily available. You have to remember not touching it and then you have to copy whatever it's on top. Bing Maps, you can click anywhere. Just right click anywhere and then copy exact. That's moving in coordinates, right? And that's gonna be useful. So let's. Um, oh, the orange I was talking about. You know, at this altitude, the orange. Go in, boom, orange, the orange, orange. Okay. Um, so let's try um, um, saving some user points in little nav map using these things for sightseeing. So for example, earlier I was just doing uh, uh, Iceland. So let's, let's close this for now. We already accelerated the Google Chrome, so we're fine. Let's, let's do something like an example, for example. Let's, let's, I was interested in uh, some landmarks in Iceland. I've never been there. I don't know anything about it. So this is like an example of what I'd do if I want to fly over it and know what I'm looking at. You know? For example, like if I just fly over it right now in Microsoft Simulator, I fly over a waterfall, I don't know what fall it is. It's like, oh, okay, right? And if you go into Microsoft Simulator, you notice that they have POIs in there, but they're missing a lot, right? And I think it's for the same reason that you can't search readily in Bing Maps, and that's why you don't. But for example, this one you have. Like, like the power spring, for example, you have it, but there must be other springs around here that is named, but you don't have it. If you don't have it here, I'm guessing that you won't have it in Fly Simulator, right? So that's the problem. So let's try like landmarks in Iceland, for example, and then there are these nice touristy photo spots and then I look at that one and go, ooh, that is so cool. That is cool. So let's plot that. Let's plot that. Now, what I'll do is select the text, see if there's any decimal degree. And obviously not. So plot that. And then I'll go into Bing Maps. Paste that in. So they have it. They even have a, like a photogenic spot. And that's where the fall is. See the white stuff? This is not it. You know, they give you the pin. But we're trying to plot for a little nav map to import into MSFS, right? And it's quite obvious that this is the fall. Like, this is not the fall. This, you know, looks like the fall. It's like from here 
go down into the shadow and then never the bubbly things in the shore down there and this way they tell you you can take the picture of the falls from there you know to there so I'm pretty sure that's the fall right there so what I do right now is I'll right click on the fall like the on the exact spot and then press copy now you have that copied you don't even need the notepad really after you copy this you just all tap to your little nav map and then on the search box if you don't have user points for example you close it by accident oh shit now you don't have it then what right you can click the uh the option list like here like like photoshop and there's a thing called user points we enable that that you know how and you can drag that around for example if i like it on the at the end you know you can drag the title off user points and then user points you can right click and add user points or press insert or at user point you can click that button so in this case I'm adding a new waterfall so I'm just gonna click add user point before I do that by the way I'm gonna clear the flight plan for yesterday so to do that in little enough map you click that fifth button reset flight plan so I don't want to see all that you just click OK there reset so the add a uh, user point you click that button add and then the uh, decimal degrees in our on a clipboard, right? So we can just paste that in there, like boom, like that, right? You paste it in there, and then it goes coordinates are not valid, right? And the reason why is because in little nav map you need to tell it, it that that is uh, north, and then there's no minus. Minus means west. And then it's still not valid. Why? Because you know you you're still missing that degree sign. Degrees are alternate so one seven six, I think. Yep. So the degree sign is an alt code alternate zero one seven six. So you hold alternate and just press zero one seven six and it'll give you that degree sign. Now it's still not valid. Why? I don't know why. So it's start over so what if I want to edit this one oh degree space and then the direction so let's try that again add oh. wait is there a oh well what dude Add there. Okay. Oh, I need that thing again. So there's no comma. Alt zero one seven six. North. Minus is west. There we go. So the format, it's, you know, you paste the decimal degree in. Uh, you have to type the degree sign back in by holding Alt and press 0176. And then, you know, North and then space, no comma. And the latitude. You know, and the minus denotes West, the positive denotes East. And now it's valid. In the type, I'll put a uh, POI. This is some place which I just want to visit. Uh, the, I don't think the region is, is important, so I'm just going to leave that blank. The ident is quite important because whatever you type in here, you're going to see, and you know, after you import the PLN into your flight simulator, you're going to, in your flight plan in, inside your airplane, you're going to see the ident exactly what you can type here so in, in the ident i'll just pick a three letter or four letter code for the falls and in this case i'll just call it you know i'll just pick the first four letter and then i'll capitalize it as elj and then the name and description you can copy that from the 
from Bing Maps. So name. You can even fault it. And then description. So if you keep doing this, you know, after a while you're gonna have your own, you know, to like sightseeing lists, for example. Um, elevation or altitude. So that's an all the difference I think. Bing Maps sometimes gives you altitude, you know. But this is not the altitude. This is the height of the fall, I think. So if they don't, then I'm not gonna fill it in because it doesn't really matter. We're gonna fly above it. We're gonna see it. Uh, visible from I think it's uh when that. Yellow circle with the POI is going to be visible from you know, when, when your flight is 250 nautical miles from this place, it's going to show up on your map, I guess. It's not from the simulator, it's from this, from the little map. So after you finish filling in all that, you can just click OK. There, now we have a new entry. Right, so for us. The tags, you can landmark it, but it doesn't matter. After it's created, you can double click on it, see if it actually goes to the correct spot, right? So I double click on this. Ooh, that looks okay. And then you zoom in the little nav map map. And that looks like a waterfall to me. Yep. See right there, there's even a symbol in the little nav map for it. So this is like a really nice way of doing it, you know. So as you can see, you can also do it in Google Map, right? It's just not as convenient because first you gotta make sure you don't like. Okay, so for example, if I want to do it in Google Maps, so I do the same. I'll do that. Go to Google Map. Is that in? And then oh god, weather. And then you can't see the falls, right? See that? So that's part of the problem. But assuming the clouds aren't there, I I already screw up, right? Because I zoomed and dragged, right? And so the numbers are changed, so then I gotta do that again. Make sure make sure the numbers doesn't change, but if you notice these numbers are different from the numbers before in Big Maps, because these coordinate it's giving me the pic the picture spot. Where you're supposed to stand to take a picture. I'm pretty sure of that. Pretty sure the falls right here. So in some ways, Google Maps is better because it's easier to search stuff with. <coughs> and in other ways, Bing Map is better because it's not cloudy. <laughs> For example, it's easier to see. And you can also right right click on exact spots and immediately copy the the decimal degree. So, right. So let's continue. Let's let's pick another spot. <coughs> Before we do that, let's load up a Microsoft Simulator because that takes a while. Oh. Okay. So let's choose another spot near the spot. Oh, what is that? Not a nice picture spot. Okay, you can press uh, back it. So after the waterfall, maybe. Ooh, so many fall. Let's look at that. Oh my god, look at that. That is insane. Wow. Okay. Let's go for us. Go for us. Let's go to the go for us. Okay, so then, you know, it gives you that thingy. It's quite obvious that, you know, that's a fault, right? Let's try it in Google Maps, see what happens. Ah, that's good. See, this time, Google Map gives you the, the white stuff, right? So it really depends. But then I drag the map again. It's just out of habit, and you screw up that number. 
get that number you're going to search again don't touch the map and then use those coordinates and these coordinates should be bang on on the red pin you use this but i'm not using that right now because bing maps has it so i'm just going to use bing maps instead of doing that i'm going to right click on that copy and then go into little nav map oh that's ready let's go into little nav map and create another poi so add huh i wonder why it does that maybe it's trying to make your life easier whatever so in there i'm just going to paste the whole thing in and then use the formatting on the right so i don't have to alt code the uh I don't have to alt code the uh, degree again, so I'm just going to do more and then no minus, no comma, less, no space. There we go. Oh, back there. False. I'm pretty sure the false is already denotes waterfall, so it's like gulf false false. <laughs> so let's take that out. Description. And then the ident, so we're just gonna call it G U L L. There we go. And then leave the other things alone. And then I just go OK. There we go. So it's trying to make your life easier when you press add, it loads the previous thing into you know, the format probably. So now I have two things. So if I double click on this, it goes there. If I double click on that, it goes there. Looks right, right? Because there's like a green space between it. And then if you zoom in, you actually arrive at that bang on. So now what I do is I'll actually zoom out. See how far those two things are. So that's in the south close. This one. Oh. That's pretty close by. Cool. I'm not going to fly in this video, I'm just going to show you how to export their flight plan to uh, Microsoft Simulator, right? So at this point, I'll just, you know, I want to fly, let's say, from north to south. So I'll go to this one because I know this one is more northern. And then I'll see whether that's easier or that's what I wanted to do. It depends on the wind at that time of the day or whatever. But let's change I changed my mind. Let's go from south to north because I noticed that there's no airport close to there in the north. But it doesn't matter really, because in Iceland you're probably gonna do a round trip anyway, because there's nowhere to land there, you know. Doesn't matter. So but whatever, let's go. Let's go that one first. So that one's there. You see that on the map already, right? So that's a little north and this one there. And then if we're doing this one, we probably we could take off at B A B I B A. We can take off at the Viva. Right. And now what I'll do is I'll go into Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'll click on the world map and make sure that it has the Viva. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and then I'll click on it and make sure it's actually in, in there. I won't plan the thing in here. I just want to make sure the airport's in the game. So I'm gonna do do it yes. Now I'll go back to the map. And if you want to do a round trip back to Biba, you know it's good, no problem. But maybe sometimes you want to land at there and then at the Biba. So, we, so let's see if they'll be back, right? So go back there. 
and we'll do that. Be that. They have be that. Boom. Great. So now you know that both airports are available. And now you can start plotting your course, uh, plotting your flight path. So what I do in the ads moment, and I'll right click on the Viva. And then I'll set airport as departure. And then I will actually right click on the Viva and set as destination. Cool, right? Elevation profile, can't calculate. Okay, and then I will go to the south one first, so that is the sound. And then I'll right click on this and go add to flight plan. See that? It's cool. Plots. And then I'll right click on the go and add to flight plan. That doesn't work. I can't, can't do that. Delete. I'll right click on the go and append to flight pad. So for some reason there's a great difference. If I add it again, then it's gonna add as a destination that you have to append to flight pad. Oh crap. And I don't know how to move the order. The ordering of these in the list. What if I select that and then add? Oh, that's how you do it. Okay, so you have to select where you want to add. Wait, that's not it. Oh, what if I... Oh, shit. Okay, just give me a minute. Delete the destination airport, append the go, and then set the destination again. Be there, be there. I'll come back to it, you know, if I find out how to drag the order in the flight plan. Anyway, destination. So that's our flight plan. So we're gonna, you know. Go to the that falls, and then go direct to the other falls, and then direct to the destination airport. And after you you plan that, it also gives you an elevation profile, so you don't have red tax anymore. And because I put twenty five thousand feet here, it's gonna plot the cruising at five thousand. You can you can change it whenever you want. You can go like twenty five hundred. For example, and then you know it'll be at 2500. So then, when you load it in Flight Simulator, the nav lock and so on, they're gonna say 2500. So, you know, you take a look at your flight plan and see if you like it. You know, sometimes if you don't like it, you want some maybe departure procedures, for example, then I'll just uh, double click Viva and then I'll see if they have procedures in the information window. You know, this one doesn't. Uh, you can also go to search. Uh, sorry, I mean airport procedures, and type in Viva. And click on that, and then go to procedures. Oh, wait. Sorry, right click on it, and go. Uh, Well, no procedures. So if the airport has procedures, you would set, click show procedures. But this one is grayed out, so there's no procedures. But for some of the larger ones, maybe you want to follow a departure procedure or when you arrive, you know, you want to select an arrival procedure and 
have that all added into your flight plan if you're going IFR. But if you're sightseeing, you know, I'm probably not going IFR. So in here, I just choose VFR. And then you're done. So assuming, okay, I like my flight plan, everything looks great. At this point, I'll save the flight plan. So I just control S. And then I'll save it in the same folder as where I'm going to save the Microsoft Simulator uh, flight plan. After you save the flight plan in the map, map you export flight plan as MSFS PLN. So export that one from Becky. That's Melarin Ninja Airport. So export that. And after you export this, there shouldn't be any problem because you already checked that those two airports exist in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And now you don't want the real-time sim connect, you know, tracking of your flight or your fuel, or your aircraft performance. You can close the nav map because you already finished using it for the purpose. So yeah, close it. So after I close it, I go back into the flight simulator. And if you want to see the waterfalls at night, be my guess, but I don't. So in here, what I'll do is I'll go live rather than go, oh, it's, it's all dark in uh, Iceland. Let's not do that. Let's see the waterfalls at around maybe uh, in the morning, like at 10 a.m., for example. And then I'll go to load, load, and in that folder you will find that flight plan, right? So ours was Viva Team Viva. It's that one. Open. Now, after you open it, I will give you a duration estimate flight time and you'll notice that these spots aren't named you know now at this point don't click any of these if you click it it'll disappear look if I if I go hmm I don't like 12 let's take off from 30 oh crap right because those two points aren't actual custom they aren't see and you can't even custom at this point because you already plot the plan oh you can oh you double click on it or what well you can't custom within certain radius but it's, it's quite buggy see those points aren't custom so if you go here and you add to you know you can add a point like that but you know since these are actual custom points you know if you choose the runway again, it won't disappear. But because these points are loaded from a file from the nav map, it's not an actual point that you clicked. So if you touch any of these, the program is going to recalculate and it's going to destroy these points. So just don't touch these on top. If you want to choose which runway to take off from, for example, you should have chosen it in a little nav map. You could choose which one way to take off from any airport. So you plan the whole flight on that nav map, export it to PLN, and when you get into the flight simulator, don't touch the planning module. But you'll notice that we set it at uh, 2,500 feet. If you go to the nav lock, it will read that into. So now you see that the uh, the cruising attitude is 2,500 feet. Pretty cool. I like that part. Um, and then you can choose your flight. Don't worry about it. Your flight won't reset the plan. So, you know, you choose an icon, for example. Little of these, for example. Yeah, gray one. You can change your, your fuel balance and all that. You go back to world map. You know, the point stays. And now when you click fly. So let's click fly and just see the, the thing in action and named with your ident. And then I'll finish the video. Just click fly, bear with me. The low time it's faster now, but it's still not super quick.
great. Now in the game. Ooh, actually, I hear some rain. In the game, if you go to your VMAP. You'll see that the ident that you typed in, the line doesn't go to you know bang on directly above it because it wants to keep the spline smooth. So same as that one on top, you know, it's smooth as possible. So it's not gonna go exactly. The GPS line is not gonna intersect exactly. But the useful thing about low nav map is you can put in the ident. You see, this is not in Microsoft Simulator, Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is what whatever you type in the ident in the uh in the little nav map so this is quite nifty like i actually kind of name your stuff and then see it on your flight so once you know you autopilot or whatever when i got get to here i'm probably going to disengage autopilot and do some sightseeing here circle a little bit take some pictures maybe change the weather a little bit you know to get a nice photo of the sunset waterfall or whatever and then i'll continue using the autopilot you know fly there and then in here I'll cut it and then just fly through golf. You know, take some pics, do some sightseeing, fly some loops, and then follow the line again and uh, have a safe landing at Beva, Beva, right? Beva. Cool, right? So that's how you do it in, uh, using Bing Maps, Google Maps, Google Nav Maps, import it, have fun. Take some nice pics. Oh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. It's currently quite rainy in Iceland. Oh, and it's dinner time for me. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. See ya.